Now, let's go back to examine Mr. Smith. The neurologic exam can give us important insights which enable us to diagnose peripheral neuropathy. Typically, for neuropathies, the most common finding is sensory loss. Sensory loss usually begins distally at the feet and hands, with preserved sensation as you move more proximally up the limb. Strength typically remains intact. If weakness is present, it is usually mild and distal in the feet and hands. Abnormalities are usually symmetric, affecting both limbs to a similar extent. If you discover significant weakness distally or weakness proximally, sensory loss confined to a limited area, or any asymmetries on your exam, the patient may have other, less common abnormalities of their peripheral nerves, such as a mononeuropathy affecting a single nerve, or an autoimmune neuropathy. In that case, use what we have reviewed about the peripheral nerves and your knowledge of the complete neurologic exam to identify the correct diagnosis. A focused neurologic exam for peripheral neuropathy checks strength, sensation, and reflexes. Examine strength both distally and proximally in the upper limbs and the lower limbs. Check finger flexion by having the patient curl their fingers into yours and try to prevent you from straightening their fingers. This technique is more reliable than having the patient squeeze your fingers. Check finger abduction by having the patient abduct their fingers. Press your index finger against theirs and your little finger against theirs to see if they can keep their fingers in place. Next, have the patient try to extend his arm at the elbow against resistance, and then flex his arm against resistance. Finally, ask the patient to abduct his arm at the shoulder against your resistance. In the lower limb, have the patient extend his toes against resistance. Then, ask the patient to extend and flex his leg at the knee against resistance. Finally, test the patient's ability to flex his lower limb at the hip against resistance. Next, check sensation to pinprick and vibration. Using a pin, gently touch the dorsal side of the patient's hand and advance up the arm in increments of about 5 to 10 centimeters. Ask the patient whether the sensation of sharpness changes as you move proximally and whether there are differences on the right arm compared to the left. For patients with neuropathy, usually the sensation becomes sharper as you move proximally on either side. Do the same thing in the lower limb, starting at the dorsum of the foot and advancing to the thigh. To check vibration, strike your tuning fork to make it vibrate. Then hold the tuning fork against the medial side of the patient's big toe at the distal joint. Time how long it takes before he is no longer able to feel the vibration. Keep in mind that vibration sense can be diminished even in healthy older patients, but they still should be able to feel the vibration for about 8 seconds. If they don't, that may be the earliest sign of peripheral neuropathy. Then do the same thing at the distal joint of the thumb. Normal elderly patients should feel some vibration for around 16 seconds. Finally, use your reflex hammer to check their reflexes. In the upper limb, check the biceps, brachioradialis, and triceps reflexes. The most reliable way to test the triceps reflex is to have the patient relax his arm. Support it in your hand when you tap on the triceps tendon. In the lower limb, check reflexes at the knees and ankles. To test the ankle reflex, have the patient relax his foot in your hand and gently dorsiflex his foot to stretch the Achilles tendon. Then strike the tendon with your hammer and see if the foot moves downward. Patients with peripheral neuropathy often have diminished or absent reflexes. Keep in mind, though, that even normal elderly patients may have absent ankle reflexes, so that finding alone would not be sufficient to diagnose peripheral neuropathy.